keep on calling to Allah. People say, well, I've called out to Allah for a long, long time. When is his help going to come? I can tell you when his help is going to come. When Bilal ibn Rabah, and I mentioned this at the Jum'ah today, when Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu an, was being dragged through the hot desert of Mecca, and he was being punished and penalized at that juncture, he knew that Allah had a bigger plan, but he didn't know exactly what that plan was that made him become reassured that I'm going to keep on saying Ahadun Ahad, Ahadun Ahad. I will not give up my faith. I will not give up my faith. I believe in one maker. I believe in Allah alone. I'm not giving this up no matter how much persecution I'm suffering. Never did he imagine at that moment that you bear patience 20 years down the line. We're going to make you so high that you're going to come to the same Kaaba in the same masjid. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. Calling out the Adhan. Who was that? The same man they were dragging a few years earlier. How many? Approximately 20. What happened? The patience they had for 20 years resulted in the victory. My brothers and sisters, our patience is only two minutes. Two minutes. After two minutes, we say, but I made a dua. Look, it's not coming. It's not going to plop through the ceiling, please. Allahu Akbar. Allah wants you to gain closeness to him a little bit more. The ones we loved the most, 20 years. Yusuf alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, all these prophets of Allah, take a look at what they went through. What happened? They recognized Allah through these signs. What was the sign? Hardship is a sign. Difficulty is a sign. We've come on earth in order to prove ourselves to Allah. That's what it is. Therefore, test after test, after test, after test. Just like when you go into a school, you're not going... For to pass your time you have to study you have to work you'll have exam upon exam a difficult one once you pass that one more difficult once you pass that one one which is even more difficult then you get a degree then you get a higher degree the higher you go the more difficult it becomes you consider it a challenge why you want a certificate of this world in order to get into a job of your choice we need a certificate of this world in order to get into jannatul firdaus the tests will be tougher and tougher the closer you are to allah the bigger the tests become so when Allah has tested you thank him and thank him again sign of Allah is the test that he puts in your life you have a health matter there are people who have a bigger health problem but they are happy with Allah they are happy with Allah look at the Prophet Sallallahu you know what he said he said oh Allah for as long as you're not angry with me or upset with me I'm okay I'm happy subhanallah can we say that may Allah make it easy for us so Allah says this one of the signs is he created you all of you from one source and then you beamed across the globe. Don't forget that. Let it get let it make you get closer to Allah through understanding what your relationship is. Moments ago we heard about the other creatures of Allah, the dog, for example, the common factor between us is that's also a creature of the same maker. So when you so when you show compassion towards the other animals, it goes to show you respect the one who gave life to these animals. Subhanallah. Where are the vets from amongst us? Mashallah. They're also doing a good job. Many people look at doctors and say, wow, these doctors are doing a brilliant job. We met a lovely brother, mashallah, top doctor. And subhanallah, the dua flows from the heart. You know, we need these people. But wallahi, we need everyone. Everyone. Allah has created us such that each one of us needs each other for different things. Just like the doctor cannot live without bread, he needs the baker. The baker will not live without perhaps something else. He needs the plumber. He needs the electrician. So we all need each other and the animals as well. You know, sometimes what happens, we become so, so forgetful that the cats around us, that we see in large numbers and the dogs, the compassion you're going to show towards them to a small degree will actually work in your favor in a huge way. But we don't look at it that way. For us, it's a pain. It's a this, it's a that. Yes, it may be. But deal with it compassionately. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying don't get rid of your problems. No, deal with it with compassion. Don't be a person who inflicts harm on a creature of Allah. 
that shows your closeness to Allah. These are signs of Allah. If Allah wanted, He wouldn't have had those there. Not at all. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Firstly, He spoke about the sign being that He created you and I. He created all of us from dust. And suddenly, we spread on this earth. Then you know what He says? وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا Many of us know that verse and we smile when we read it before marriage. Alhamdulillah. Why? We say, oh, from the signs of Allah is that He has created for you, from you, spouses who will be what? So who will, whom you will achieve comfort, solace through. So Allah says, yeah, we want you to be taking it easy, comfortable, relax, filled with love, compassion. Through who? Your spouse. So you find all the young people reading this verse, oh, mashallah, what happens when you get married? It's like that verse don't exist sometimes. Astaghfirullah. May Allah make it easy. May Allah grant us happiness. We need to revisit who is my spouse. A daughter of a beloved person, a member of a family, and in the case of the husband, a son of someone respectful, a person who has a family unit, a person who's placed in my responsibility, in my care, or with me to live together, perhaps to have children together by the will of Allah, and to be able to reproduce so that by the time we go, we've left a generation of wonderful people on earth, who are going to be serving the rest of humanity, thereby earning the pleasure of the Almighty and worshipping the Almighty alone, teaching, training, etc. Many of us are parents before we've even become responsible within our own lives. So therefore, we struggle. But Allah says, you know what? That moment of marriage is such that automatically at that moment, there is something that happens. Listen to this. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً He has put between you at that moment something called mawadda, which is a very high level of love, and something called rahma, which is the mercy. You feel connected to your spouse. Remember I said here initially, right? Right at the beginning, okay? It's up to you to nurture that, to grow it and make sure you don't lose it, but rather build on it such that 10 years later, 20 years later, and wallahi, there are so many of us who can say, I'm far happier, far more in love with my spouse today than I was 10 years or 20 years ago. If you can say that, mashallah, Alhamdulillah, you're a responsible person who's understood the plan of Allah. Focus on what you have. If one person, if one woman, if, if your own family can actually say, wow, this person is the best person they could be. Trust me, it's better than a hundred people saying, yeah, this guy is just a womanizer. May Allah forgive us. This guy is just a this and a that. Come on, be responsible. It's a sign of Allah. It is sacred. Allah says you should be getting closer to me through your connection with your spouse. Subhanallah. Together, you should remind each other about Allah. You should think for yourself. Imagine the signs of Allah. The embryo, the fetus, childbirth. All of those are topics on their own, but they are signs of Allah. What happened? Ask those who don't have children. They will tell you how desperately they are trying. May Allah make it easy for them and bless them with offspring. And then when we have these children, guess what? We take it for granted. How do we take it for granted? It's like nothing ever happened. We don't even spend time with them. We have no method of speaking to them. We have no connection to them. We have no communication with them. And we want to gain closeness to Allah. Allah says, that was a sign. Come on. That was a sign. My brothers and sisters, the signs within us that should be moving us closer to Allah are so many. We haven't even prayed for them. We haven't ever asked the Almighty for most of the things we have. You know, when we pray to the Almighty, we ask Him, Oh Allah, grant me this. Oh Allah, grant me that. What happens? We start crying. Like I said, we want the answer in two minutes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you billions of things without you asking. 
Look at your eyes. Today you're looking at me, mashallah. I'm looking at you, subhanallah. Did you ask Allah, oh Allah, give me eyes. You had those eyes. Oh Allah, give me this and that. You didn't have the problem. You're breathing without knowing you're breathing. Subhanallah. We're talking. We have a tongue. With the tongue tastes. Everything else happens. Have you asked Allah, oh Allah, grant me nails. Give me, you know, ears with, that can hear. We've already got that. Oh Allah, protect these ears of mine. Many of us haven't even thought to thank Allah for these things. And Allah says, all I want to you to do is just pray five times a day. Be a good person, be honest, fulfill your pillars and make sure that you try your best to stay away from those things which are bad for you that we've just made prohibited. We still think, nah, not going to do that. How dare the Almighty gave you your hands, your legs, your, the feet, the toes, every little detail, the identity of every person, the iris of every person from the beginning to the end, from Adam to the last person is different. Your thumbprint, different, everything different. Allah created you and you, unique, totally unique. Be proud of how Allah has made you. I'm not talking of the pride that's filled with arrogance, but the pride that is connected to happiness. Be happy. Allah made me. I love my color. I love my hair. I love my, the race. I love the ethnicity. I love where I come from. And that's Allah who made me that. Alhamdulillah. I'm not embarrassed about anything. And I will live and those who are true human beings will appreciate me for who I am. That's a sign of Allah. You get closer to Allah by appreciating others. When you see someone darker than you in complexion, perhaps they may be closer to Allah than you. Take a moment to smile at them. Take a moment to greet them. It's a sign you've understood the maker who made you and them the same. Respect them and they will respect you. When you get into paradise, you might be surprised to see some of those whom you may have through weakness considered lower on earth, higher than you by far. May Allah bless all of us.